The W205 Generation C-Class was launched at the 2014 North American Auto Show after its initial debut in late 2013. If you're looking for an early model then Europeans got their first deliveries in March 2014, while North America waited until September 2014 with the rest of the world receiving their first deliveries in early 2015. All are sold as 2015 model year vehicles. If you have owned or driven a C-Class of a previous generation then the W205 will feel like a larger vehicle with a noticeable step up in standard features compared to previous generations. This is because although the A-Class was still the entry model, Mercedes felt the C-Class was no longer the car that new buyers to the brand would initially go for, and the Mercedes CLA was now officially the smallest sedan model, so while there are base C-Class models in Europe that are stripped of many of their car's features, they are still better equipped than many other European production vehicles. The car is also physically larger than the W204 generation C-Class that was on sale from 2007 to 2014. It was now 71.3 inches or 1810mm wide and 184.5 inches or 4686mm long in standard trim, although a long wheelbase model, an estate or wagon, and a coupe and convertible were also sold at varying lengths. Part of the size increase is that this generation C-Class used the, at the time, brand new Mercedes platform coded MRA for Modular Rear Architecture. This has also underpinned larger cars like the E-Class and GLC models, so the C-Class's frame needed to increase in size for the platform to work across such a wide band of vehicles. Although this guide won't specifically cover the coupe and convertible, many aspects including the engines and common faults are shared across the platforms. A 9-speed automatic transmission is standard across almost every model, however there are exceptions including a 7-speed auto that was initially fitted to a quarter of the petrol models in the range. Europeans and select world markets were offered base models with a manual gearbox. These are the C160, C180 and C200 along with the C180D, C200D and C220D. Optional 7 or 9-speed transmissions were offered on these though, no C-Class is manual only without the option of an auto. The majority of manual cars were dropped from the lineup when the car was facelifted in 2018, and all were now 9 speed autos except the C160, which was dropped after one year. The C180 kept its manual until 2020, when it also became standard with the 9G transmission, leaving the C180D and C200D as the only cars that ended production with standard fit manual gearboxes. I'll cover engines in the guide. However, note that AMG models will get their own video. Although one point of note for people considering the C43 and C63 AMG is that the performance exhaust optional on AMG models is heavily dampened in noise on facelift models due to the much stricter noise limits being enforced on new production vehicles in 2016. The previous model had an exception as it was not a new car in 2016 having been on sale from 2015 but the facelift officially changed this as the car was recertified with new emissions and engine equipment and so had to abide by the new rules. Moving on to safety and the C-Class scored 5 stars with Euro NCAP in 2014, a rating which has now expired due to the testing regime updates. It scored well with North American IIHS when it was tested in 2015 with the only area not scoring top marks being the driver restraints which were classed as acceptable due to the test dummy's head rolling from the frontal airbag to the curtain airbag, which would likely avoid serious injury, but could have caused minor injuries. Next up are the general faults with the C-Class, excluding the engines that I'll come on to later in the guide, and a reminder to check out the Miles Driven book if you want to support the channel and enjoy a good read while doing it. First up on the checklist should be an inspection of the seats and interior trim for any tears or peeling material. Mercedes offered a range of fibres for the interior, but man-made leather generally fares worse with age, this is now sometimes called vegan leather in marketing material. The cloth trim, if offered, is generally hard wearing but hard to come by in anything but a base model car. It's also worth checking the head lining on any model, especially around the grab handles, rear corners and the centre. Chattering windscreen wipers that don't operate smoothly were reported across sales years. The answer most owners found was to replace the original equipment items with Bosch branded ones. Other brands were tried but the Bosch ones seemed to give a consistent result. Aluminium bolts and lock nuts were initially used for the steering rack, however after wear was noticed and reports of broken bolts caused warranty claims for repair, a switch to steel bolts was made. There is no bulletin on the exact change date, but these issues are usually noted on cars from the first two years of production. Check the infotainment system operates without lagging and any navigation system will actually route you to your destination. If the system refuses to find the destination, it will likely need a software reboot or update 
but rarer issues can cause a larger job in labour time to remove the hardware and bench test it. Auto braking systems are generally good, but there have been reports of faults with sensors causing the brakes to be applied at full stop effort in construction areas where road signs are removed or reflective signs are used. A nuisance that I found a lot of complaints about was rattles. Some of the centre trim, others around the dashboard and some from the trim around the rear hatch. These complaints appear to separate the W205 cars into two categories. Some cars seem to creak everywhere and others that haven't rattled or creaked once. Because of this, if you do hear a few creaks on a test drive, it may be worth finding another car to strike a deal on. If you hear a rattle from the window, it's trim rubbing up against the bodywork, a felt strip should resolve the issue. Production models from launch to 2017 did have reports of brake shudder, causing premature wear of the brakes and braking components. Several fixes were attempted under warranty at the time, but no single method seemed to catch all answer. The issue then appears almost entirely to disappear on facelift models. In reliability surveys when the car was in production, the highest number of complaints were for electronics that were not related to the engine. Seat motors, infotainment, electric windows, track pads and dashboard switches, all of them need checking. If you don't, you could be making a new and costly friend in a local auto electrician. Interestingly, the C-Class scored widely different reliability scores depending on the automotive media outlet. In some surveys, it scored near the bottom, with owners being very critical and saying it would be their last Mercedes. In others, it scored fairly well. It wasn't a Toyota Corolla, but it was one of the better prestige cars. What I've taken from this is that you'll either find a C-Class in good order that shouldn't give you any issues, or one that you may as well spend your money on keeping a blind rooster in your bedroom that thinks you're in a state of perpetual daybreak. What I'm really saying is, have a really good thorough look over a C-Class and you should get a good one, but owner feedback in the comments will be appreciated. Before we move on to the engines, there are the recalls. I'll mention the largest recalls here, but some smaller recalls may apply in your domestic market. An oil leak from the timing chain tensioner of models built in 2014 and equipped with an OM651 diesel engine caused a recall in March 2015 to rectify the issue. In that same month another recall was made, this time for C200 diesel models built from April 2014 that were at risk of stalling during engine warm-up and required a software update. A month later a more general recall for issues with stalling in the warm-up phase was made as the fuel pump feed had reports from detaching of its mountings. The separation resulted in fuel starvation of the engine. Until 2018 there were more than five recalls for safety equipment, all covering short windows of production that were either related to airbag malfunctions or seatbelt buckle issues. A March 2019 recall had to be made during the engine shutting down and not restarting for vehicles produced from May 2018 to February 2019. The power control units were found to have faulty software, in the worst case this was resolved in engine failure and replacement with a new power plant. A July 2021 recall with issues for engines built from 2014 and 15 as alternators were failing and risking a potential fire when they had failed. An April 2022 recall addressed an issue with the SOS call system built in cars from 2018 to 2020 that were not calling emergency services due to the module deactivating. Now onto the engines and on this generation C-Class there were three petrol models not including the C63 AMG V8 and three diesel models plus four petrol hybrid models, one of which is a plug-in hybrid and one regular hybrid and another plug-in model for the diesels. As engines are shared across models and hybrids, I'll try to include them together where possible to simplify the guide. First to the diesel models. Initially there are two diesel engines, the 1.6 OM626 fitted with the C180D and C200D and then the 2.2 litre OM651 engine fitted to the C200D, C220D and C250D. The smaller 1.6 is coded OM626 and manages an average of 68.2 miles per gallon or 4.41 litres per 100 kilometres. Owner reports overall are positive, with reliability above average in the prestige segment. If you are to have problems then EGR valves lead the list of faults, although turbo failure on poorly maintained examples has happened. The larger OM651 is available with either 134, 161, 179 or 201 brake horsepower and are rated at 50.4 miles per gallon or 5.6 litres per 100 kilometres on the older NEDC test cycle. Overall the consensus is that these engines are reliable but only when servicing is kept up to date with timing chains and injectors the two key failure points reported when things go wrong. A 1.6 and 2 litre diesel coded OM654 is the only option on facelift models. The 1.6 is only fitted to the C180D and C200D models although the 2 litre was also fitted to the C200Ds depending on where you are in the world. The larger 2 litre was mainly fitted to the C220D and C300D 
the later getting a twin turbocharger setup, the power of the 1.6 gets either 120 or 160 brake horsepower, and the 2 litre has 150 brake horsepower in the C200D, but then increases to 191 and then 242 brake horsepower in the C220 and C300 respectively. The vacuum system and timing chains had the highest number of complaints from owners. Official WLTP fuel economy figures are 45.6 miles per gallon or 6.2 litres per 100 kilometres. However, some owners report much higher than this, especially on a cruise. The hybrid diesels use the earlier OM651 2.2 litre engine. These boast hybrid power, but little range. Power is rated at a combined 228 brake horsepower. On to the petrols and starting with the two smallest engines, early models have a 1.6 coded M274, which is also available as a 2 litre, while facelift models get an addition of a 1.5 engine coded M264. The larger 2 litre petrol that is also coded M274 ends DE20 to distinguish it from the 1.6 that ends DE16. The 1.6 engine is rated at 127 brake horsepower in the C160 or 154 brake horsepower in the C180. The lower power of these two is only offered in some markets. The 1.5 is only offered on facelift models and is fitted to some C180s and also C200 mild hybrid models. It produces 154 brake horsepower in the C180 and a combined 195 brake horsepower in the mild hybrids, although the engine alone makes 181 brake horsepower. Fuel economy is rated at 43.5 miles per gallon or 6.49 litres per 100 kilometres. Cylinder head failure, turbocharger problems and timing chain issues lead the list of complaints from owners. Those out of warranty faced high charges and so while these are still relatively rare when looking at how many of these engines were produced, if the car doesn't build power like you expect or makes any rattles then it's worth getting it inspected before proceeding with a purchase. A 4 cylinder turbo 2 litre engine picked up a large quantity of sales across the world market. This is the M274 mentioned earlier. It's fitted to the C200, C250 and C300. Power starts at 181 brake horsepower, then 208 brake horsepower, and the C300 has 242 brake horsepower. This engine gets dropped in the facelift cars for a 2 litre version of the 1.5 discussed earlier. This was one of the most popular engines. It's a mild hybrid and badge C300 on facelift cars. Power is rated at a combined 268 brake horsepower. The most serious problem is piston failure, usually on cylinder 1, and a known issue with the wrist pins. Timing chain freeze when the car is left in conditions below minus 30 Celsius can be a problem. I know a number of subscribers are from Scandinavia and Canada, so it's well worth mentioning. Also note the timing chain tensioner has been a commonly reported problem that occurs fairly early, a notable rattle from the engine at idle or low speed should be listened out for. Official fuel economy ranges across models, but 39.2 miles per gallon or 7.21 litres per 100 kilometres was one of the more common averages across the range. The 3 litre V6 engine code M276 was fitted to the C400 and C450 models as well as the C43 AMG. I'll focus on the non-AMG variant. Early on it gets 328 and 362 brake horsepower. After the facelift, only the C400 models are sold, retaining 328 brake horsepower. Fewer models with this engine were sold, but expect it to be fairly reliable, with only the timing chain and assembly getting a few complaints for issues resulting in replacement. There are then two plug-in hybrids on facelift models. The diesel is paired with the OM654 engine fitted to the regular C300D, but combined horsepower is 311 and 34 miles of electric range was quoted when new. There is also a petrol plug-in hybrid that appears more popular across market. This gets the same 2 litre petrol as the C300 on facelift models. Combined power is 328 brake horsepower and the same electric range as the diesel of 34 miles is officially quoted. For our picks on a lower budget, the 2.2 litre diesel fitted to the C220D would be a great choice on a pre-facelift model. On a higher budget, the C400 facelift would not only be reliable, but will have the most power and keeps the 6 in the chorus when you put your foot down. If a C-Class is a little small for your needs, I also have a guide on the E-Class, or you can check out its main rival, the BMW 3 Series, next.